months ago, I made a video on Kirby Star Allies and obviously the ending of the game, talking about Galactonite's new form, Morpho Knight. But one thing that I didn't really touch was what exactly did Highness say in that weird sequence? You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> So some of you probably broke down the text and really just to see what Highness was talking about, but not a lot of people actually deciphered it and really kind of came through with a theory, except for somebody that actually commented on my videos. This comment and theory actually comes from someone named McTofet Does Stuff, and I'm going to put his uh, picture and profile thing up there. So um, thank you for the comment because this was actually intriguing to me, and this is one thing I never really did with the game. I never really broke down Highness's text in that weird scene, but when I did so, I found some very interesting interesting things and perhaps some stuff that ties into the lore that Nintendo slipped in right under our noses. So without further ado, let's take a look. After defeating Zam Partizan, she will call out to a strange figure in the back and that figure it turns out to be Highness, the leader of this organization. And he's pretty much trying to summon an ancient evil in order to consume the rest of the world. Now this is where things get a little weird. After confronting Highness, he comes down to Kirby and his friends and starts mumbling some stuff about how he's the, you know, ancient ruler and he's trying to redeem the ancient lord. And this is where he starts talking in this gibberish stuff and he starts to explain a lot of things that we may have not caught at first. So in order to kind of go through everything that he's talking about, we are going to slow this thing down to hyper slow speed. Let's do it. His first claim states that we are the masters of a power driven to the far reaches of the universe and we have but one desire. Can one such as you possibly fathom how dearly we have clung to this dream across the eons? So Highness explains how him and the mages are harnessers of this gigantic massive power that was, you know, hidden and locked away in a faraway space. And he explains how he is super powerful and that he doesn't think Kirby can handle him or anybody can handle him of that matter. Next he states, how could you? You couldn't. Never, ever, ever, we who once faced those who were in such fear of our power that they sealed us away and banished us to the edge of the galaxy. Us. Now this is a very strange one, and no enemy in the Kirby lore has really ever spoken like this. This person, this highness, is very adamant that he is that powerful. And his powers are just insane because apparently he is saying that he was banished by some type of tribe a long time ago. Now who is this tribe that banished them? You know, we, we never really know, but what's so interesting about this is the only really other character that get banished, or we heard that got banished, from the Kirby series is Galactonite. So does Highness and Galactonite have some type of connection? Well we might find out more from this next statement. Next he claims, as if that loveliness wasn't enough, they tried to erase our very existence from history. Root. Only through our magic were we able to overcome their science and achieve great prosperity. So whoever Highness truly is, I mean, he must have done something completely outrageously insane and just must have some incredible powers because whoever these interlopers are, they wanted to rid his name from the entire galaxy and everywhere. They wanted no one to find this creature and no one to, you know, stumble across him if they ever did on accident, so this is really interesting. Now this is the statement that threw me for a loop. He claims that we alone were responsible for stopping that repulsive nightmare of a galactic crisis, yet this is how you repay us? This won't stand. It won't be forgiven. It won't be forgotten. Never, ever, ever. So at first glance, you're just like, what? So apparently Highness was responsible for stopping some other type of high evil. And when he first said, you know, Nightmare, I thought instantly of Nightmare from the very first Kirby game. And then I thought about this, and Kirby defeated every other enemy. So what enemy has Kirby technically never defeated? And if you read closely, he claims that it is a repulsive nightmare of a galactic crisis. Galactonite. Makes sense. But we are told in Kirby Superstar that Galactonite was an ancient evil and had to be sealed away because his powers were too strong and that he was a good warrior that turned evil. So what made Highness, this creepy evil guy, end up imprisoning another evil? Well let's look at it like this. What if one day Galactonite was on a mission to defeat Highness after you know being recruited and called out to help? And what if Highness overtook Galactonite and turned him into this evil form of himself? And then within that evil form, Galactonite, you know, could not be held back. He was too powerful and Highness was worried. 
So in Highness's worry, he ended up imprisoning him. We can even compare the Jamba heart to that of the crystallized structure that Galactonite is put into. And if you look very closely, they look like they're made almost out of the same crystalline substance, the same material, and the same color, and just, you know, the same overall design. And it's very, you know, odd. So maybe this is kind of the game that connects Galactonite's, you know, lore together. And maybe that Highness is behind all of it. Maybe Highness has just made Galactonite brainwashed and Galactonite is just on this mission to find him. Uh, but the question is, where does this Butterfly and Morphonite tie in? And I just think that's a completely different story. And if you have any questions regarding that, you should check my last video as I, you know, kind of covered the whole Butterfly lore. Highness then goes on to state, Those who called us mad, are you listening? You left us at the edge of the galaxy to be forgotten. Then went along your merry way, probably living somewhere pretty and peaceful. But know this, your future is a farce. You have none. We, masters of a matter most dark, vow to be restored, as foretold in the Book of Legend, which everyone thought was just a fairy tale. It wasn't. So this statement is really just getting back at, you know, Highness's peers, you know, people that laughed at him, people that thought he was insane and crazy and people that even banished him. He's saying, you know, everything that I told you about in the past is about to come into revelation. It's about to happen. Revelation is here and he's about to rain destruction on everybody. He's about to, you know, resurrect this evil Lord that has been foretold in scriptures a long time ago. And he's giving everybody an abrupt warning and, you know, consequences are coming. Highness then finishes off his statements by claiming we have already obtained the vessel that contains our Dark Lord, and he will soon awaken and shower us in compassion. Look, the vessel of our Dark Lord is filling up even as we speak. Now, the time for his greatness to enter our world has come. Welcome to a new history, a new age, the age of awesome. Happy birthday, Dark Lord. Happy birthday. This outer shell and vessel that he keeps talking about is obviously Void Termina. You battle him at the end and go inside and find out that the real monster, the real Dark Lord, is this gooey, weird creature that resembles a lot about Kirby. Um, and there's this theories all over that one, but this video isn't going to cover that particularly. This is mostly just for Highness. And, you know, Highness is getting ready for this big resurrection day, and he's super excited to tell everybody that, you know, forsaken him, Here's the time of reckoning, it's about to happen. Then after all that talk, you fight him and completely destroy him, then his hood comes off, and then you see this serious dude looks like this. Now you understand why people, you know, forsaken him, why people, you know, thought he was nothing. <laughs> Look at this dude. Anyways, you beat him again, completely destroy him and all of the, the Jim Bastion mages, and uh, yeah, it's not even a fight. One more thing to note before we go, though, is during the Void Termina fight, you can actually see you know, Highness and the Jambastian Mages stuck inside Void Termina, you know, locked up and swinging around. You can actually save them. And at the very end of the Void Termina fight, you'll find that you actually freed Highness and the Jambastian Mages. And, um, I don't know, they're free to go, you know, so we could see more of them in the future and maybe get more of an explanation of who they are. But, uh, as of right now, the only thing we really know is that they are some type of ancient race who's gotten, you know, forsaken to the end of the universe. And I don't know how the, you know, Jambastian mages came up with uh, Highness and, you know, collabed with them. But um, it's a weird story. And the fact that Highness could have some type of, you know, troubled past with Galactonite is even more intriguing. Um, he even mentions it, and it's just, it's really weird. It's really weird, and I can't wait to see what Nintendo does with the Galactonite lore and um, see how they expand it. So uh, thank you guys for tuning in, and if you have any other theories regarding Void Termina, go ahead and shoot them my way because I do plan on making a separate video just for him. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for tuning in, and I will uh, be right back with more lore and more theories for you guys for different games, and I'm glad that you guys enjoyed the last one. I hope you enjoy this one as well. Thank you again for the comments, and uh, I hope you guys have yourselves a great day. Thanks, guys.